Hey guys, good morning and goodbye. episode that I was hoping I would never have to make and hopefully will never make again. Uh, today we are treating a fungal infection in the tank. Uh, as you can see here, my Garami Benny, the croaking Garami, has a fungal infection on his dorsal fin. Now I don't know how this came about. I have added fish recently. If you've been keeping up, you know that I added dwarf neon rainbow fish really recently. So that could have been the cause because I didn't quarantine them. I never quarantine my fish, which is never a good idea. So because this tank is so big, it might be quite expensive proportionately for me to treat the whole tank. And I am gonna treat the whole tank just in case it did spread. There's no use in uh, treating the gourami and then finding out it's spread to the farloella. So I have on hand Tetra Lifeguard. We're not gonna use this because the tablets are meant for much smaller doses. So instead we are going to be using API Pimafix. This is a liquid solution that we're gonna add once every day, uh, probably 20 milliliters every day for the next five days to treat this. But before we do treat this, there are some things we need to go through. Turn off your filters, ladies and gentlemen, because this is where it begins. If you are like me, and you have an Aqua Clear filter, which is the best filter ever, by the way, just in case you were wondering, uh, you have a drippy filter. <laughs> you have layers in your filtration system, so there's different types of media. The bacteria is mostly gonna be housed in the sponge at the bottom, but you also have phosphate and carbon filtration, if you're like me. Here's our carbon, right here, it's disgusting. And here is our phosphate. I believe it's phosphate, correct me if I'm wrong. But these are chemical filters. They're gonna get out uh, different impurities in the water. Lots of stuff, mostly don't need to worry about it. Sometimes you do. Um, in this case you do because it will filter out our medication and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bucket of tank water to keep the bacteria on here. We're gonna keep the sponge in there and then we're gonna start dosing. All right, so now that we've got our media, our chemical filtration in the bucket, we are ready for the chemicals. <laughs> so hopefully this isn't spray. <laughs> uh, we have a measuring cup on the top, which is great. So we're gonna do two full doses, just 20 milliliters into the 40 gallon. Spread it around a little bit, a little bit of mixing, you know? I like how the rainbow fish are trying to eat it. <laughs> All right, so as I was saying before, this is bing, what the gourami looks like now. You can see it's just a little bit of white fuzz sort of on the dorsal fin. Um, and this is why it's really important to observe your fish, not just for fun, but to make sure they're healthy like you would with any pet. At this stage of the infection, I'm confident that I can combat it effectively. But if I had been away for a week and it had spread to the other fish and it had taken over the gourami, uh, it's very unlikely that I would be able to fight it effectively. This video also shows the importance of having different medications on hand, even just the cheap stuff. Uh, Anti-parasite, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you do, depending on um, your history with fish from your fish store. My fish tend to get more fungal infections more often at my fish store. So luckily I had the a API um, Pima fix on me. I'm probably gonna need to pick up some more, but we'll see how that goes. And I will update you guys in the coming week. Hey guys, welcome back to the desk. Don't worry, you're not in trouble, but I do apologize for the sound quality. If you didn't notice, I dumped my phone underwater <laughs> at the beginning of this video. So hopefully it's not that bad, but we're gonna get right into it with what the updates have been in the last little while since I started dosing meds in the 40 gallon. So unfortunately there have been deaths, not 
deaths of any of the subjects of the video, which have been the Borneo loach and the Garami. Those are still very much alive. Uh, you can see the Garami here, it's looking very good. Absolutely a beautiful fish as always. Uh, the Borneo loach, on the other hand, still has that lump and I don't know what to do with it. I'm obviously not gonna send it back to the store because that's just mean. That's like if you got a dog and the dog like broke its leg and then you just get a refund and get a different dog. No, you've grown attached to that dog. You're, gonna, you're not gonna let that dog die back at the breeders or whatever. You're gonna keep that dog for as long as it's gonna live. And I feel the same way about this Borneo loach. So whatever happens, we're gonna keep him. We're gonna give him the best life he can. And if this, if it's a cancerous tissue, if it overcomes the entire fish, at least he had a good home while he was alive. So deaths, there have been deaths, unfortunately. Um, I talked about how the shrimp died, a bunch of the shrimp died. I'm trying to get their numbers back. Fortunately, there are some shrimp that are still alive, some very healthy shrimp with full clarity, which is how you know they're healthy. So I'm just hoping that there's enough males and females to get the population back up again when I fix the plants, because the plants are a whole other problem that we're gonna try and solve in a different video, but yeah. <laughs> there's also been a death in a species that I can't really talk about, just because it wouldn't really make sense for you guys. So we'll have to touch on that at another time. And then I also lost a Corydora. Um, I just came in here one time and I counted them and there was only five, and as you guys know, I bought six. And I thought it was just hiding, but I keep coming in here and counting only five. So I guess it died and the snails ate it overnight. I have no idea. I am feeding them well, not overfeeding them, of course, but making sure they get enough food. Um, so I don't think it was starvation. It could have been that it was wild caught. The store Critter Jungle, which I showed you guys before, said that they never did wild caught and it was all local bred. But my expectation is that it did die. And as I'm looking at the tank right now, there is a Corydora who's kind of swimming like he's got dropsy. So we'll keep an eye on him uh, as we go forward. So hopefully we don't lose another Corydora. But that kind of concludes this video. Um, we solved a problem. We kind of created a problem. I'm pretty sure the meds and the salt and all that are wrecking my plants in the 40 gallon. Because these plants in the 10 gallon are fine. The only problem that I have in the 10 gallon is algae and I'm slowly starting to beat that back, what with the Borneo loach and less lighting. But the plants in the 40 gallon, man, they are just dying. They're really suffering and I'm gonna start adding fertilizer, see if that helps. But again, that's another video. So do these medications work? That's kind of the point of the video. Uh, yeah, I would say they do. But more important than medication is a clean tank. Not clean as in there's no algae, Clean as in, there's no ammonia in the water. The nitrates aren't too high, you know, it's not, it's not an unhealthy environment. The healthier the environment, the less likely your fish are to lose the battle to infections. Cause technically, all living things are always fighting off infections. But if something weakens them like stress, and we're always telling you not to stress your fish out, because stress is kind of the gateway to illness. It doesn't cause illness, but it allows for illness to enter in. I did want to share with you guys a little bit of info about the next video because I'm super excited for it. We are completely rescaping the 10 gallon. We're putting a bunch of stuff in there, which I'm really excited about. And I'm actually starting it today. So if you guys haven't already, subscribe and you won't miss it. Like this video if you did like it, and I'll see you next Sunday.